but will it be a welcome one? What's up? I'm getting married, Kevin. And after the news... Some songs are very, very long. This one isn't. Hail and pace with some Highland hijinks. I'm off the back pipe. I mean, what I mean is I'm tough, if you know what I mean. They'll have you in stitches. Entertainment, drama and comedy. Next tonight on TVS. to Berkshire's biggest exhibition of hi-fi, TV and video and home appliances. Come along and see the latest in home entertainment. Meet the experts from the major manufacturers. Latest products, great prices, free admission, all at Seawood's exhibition, Shire Hall Reading, October 12th and 13th. Chief Inspector Wexford's past is returning to haunt his present as the TVS produced a new lease of death in the highly acclaimed Ruth Rendell mystery series continues at 7.45. That's in 30 minutes. First on TVS, Britain's most popular prankster, Mr. Beadle. Beadle's about. To the show. Take a wander through tonight's wonders. We make a mess of moving day with our collapsing platter van, create a sticky situation with our double crossing dating agency, and things go bonkers when our baked beans go bang. <laughs> Sitting next to me now is Tony Hall, who works for Tom Saunders. Tom contacted us and told us what a great guy Tony is. So we arranged for Tony to work for our dodgy removal man, packing some very valuable antiques. But what Tony didn't know was what was hidden in the back of our removal van. Here's moment, Tony meeting Malcolm, moment, our boss. Ill, so, uh, we couldn't finish the job. Is it all up? Yeah, I just got a temp in, love. All right. right. Now, yeah. listen, I'm in a hurry. Yeah. So make sure it's absolutely safe what you're doing yeah, no because problem. they're valuables no and you know they're going up for auction, yeah. all right? Yeah. Okay, I'll leave okay. you to it. I'm just going off for five minutes. Yeah, okay? all right, lovey. All right. So the lads set to work loading the van with all the valuable Are antiques so to... our lady can move to Milan. <laughs> Put these boxes on. I'm just gonna hit round with the, the bookies and put, and put a bet on if I can. Put the put one in there, one in here. I shan't be long. Right. Here's our snooty neighbour who wants Excuse the van me. moved. Excuse me. Can you move your vehicle? Move it. I've yeah, got yeah. the case down. It's just propped off a minute. It won't be sick. You're obstructing my access. Right, yeah, you won't be sick. You must have a set of keys to move this vehicle. Right. I've got to leave in like five minutes. Can you check? Oh, yes, thank you. Can you just move, reverse back a couple of feet so I can get out? Thank you. This is our masked man. While Tony moves the van, he's going to cause havoc.
You stopped, did you? You <laughs> killed my cat. Stop doesn't mean break like a stunt driver, does it? Well, did you secure the load? You gave me an area. Don't try to throw the blame to me. Did you secure the load? Your cat, you're worried about your cat. I mean, is this your full time occupation? No, no it isn't. No. no, obviously not. Decimating property oh, God, is you your full time do? occupation. What do you do? Well, I've just seen. Well, don't talk about where I come from, right, love? We, got, we work for a living. Who was that? <laughs> <Please. laughs> stop, tell him, mate, to stop. Have you driven a loaded van before? No, I haven't. <laughs> I've seen people. Here comes the householder to discover the damage. Yes, Jackie. This idiot. Don't call me an idiot. This idiot here. Don't call me an idiot. As I was saying, this idiot. He was breaking like a stunt man. Oh, you screamed that to make the stop for the cat. It's Bert Reynolds from Smokey and the Bandits. Oh, no. <laughs> Who put this thing down? Why is it all open like this? These are antiques. Did you know how much these are worth? No, these are our assets. No, no. Look, they're all smashed. They're ruined, aren't they? You've ruined all yeah, my I'm antiques. Yeah, I've just ran off. Believe me, I wouldn't deliberately do something like that. Believe me. Are you an idiot? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Are you? Yeah, right. <laughs> what happened here? The boss what is back. What do you think? Yeah, you told me you're yeah. a driver, from Well, how long have you been driving? Three months. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this is thousands eh? old. I mean, we're not going to be able to go to Milan now. I mean, I left you in charge. You know, I just went up to the chemist, get something from the diggy tummy. <laughs> well, I can't find him anywhere. Who? My cat. You're a lunatic. I'm, I'm a lunatic. A lunatic. I'm a lunatic. You're admitting it. I'm a lunatic. Oh, I'm a lunatic. <laughs> yeah. What's she doing? She's worried about the cat. Oh, don't break any more, please. <laughs> Enter me as the husband of the household. <laughs> A little accident, all right. I'm sorry. Love. A little accident? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is this? I'm sorry, love. Pardon? I, really I know. I really am. I'm sorry, Marcus, I'm sorry. What? Whose fault is this? Um, Tony, yeah, just over explain, there? Tony. What's, Say something, please. What's going, going on? Oh, uh, I don't believe it. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much indeed for your help. Now, Tony, there is a little bit of film that we didn't show, but we think you might like to see. Because Tony actually got out of the van to check his load before he moved it. And our masked man was in full view. But somehow, it just didn't register. Take a look at this. No, there's nothing here. Hurry up. Come on. One second. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Hall. Please meet the delightful Natalie O'Connell and her boyfriend of six years, Richard Hofen. Natalie's boss, Margaret Lawler, sent Natalie along to work at our dating agency where she met a lady complaining about her last date. But the last date in question turned out to be... <laughs> well, see for yourself. Here's our dating agency office. And here's Natalie, who's been left all alone on her first day in charge of the business. Hello, ideal friends. Yes, it is. And here comes the lovelorn Jackie to register a complaint about her date last night. OK, then. Bye. Hi. Um, I'm 
Mm. Jackie Chatfield is still here. She's literally just popped out. You've just missed, missed her. Oh, um, Can I? well, um, jot down some information for her. Yes, well, what is your name? I'm Natalie. Hello, Natalie. I'm Jackie. All right, um, hi. Yeah, I'm in a bit of a um, state, you see. I had this date last night. Um, um, right. His name's Dave. 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 Do you know his surname? Uh, Cooper. What Natalie doesn't uh, know well, yet is that Jackie is describing Natalie's away. boyfriend, Richard. All Natalie's like, week. Leaving me, five yards dragging behind him, and he kept saying, come on, hurry up. Anyway, we got... Did you one. say arrogant? Arrogant. A bit arrogant, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good word. Anyway, right. when we got to this restaurant, he didn't ask me what I wanted to eat. I mean, I like Italian, sometimes I like Chinese. Well, it was an Indian restaurant, right? Which, obviously... Self-centred? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Self-centred, mm. I'd say. Um, anyway, we went into this restaurant, and um, we, we, he ordered some wine. Did anyway. he ask you what wine you wanted? Um, no, he just he chose the wine. It. He chose the wine, yes. There were mirrors all the way around, and he was looking mm. at himself in the mirrors and checking mm. his hair mm. instead of looking at me. And every time I tried to make any conversation and I called him Dave, he'd ignore me. It was like as if he wasn't really called Dave, it was he was acting really strangely. Mm. He said, Oh, do you want to see my party trick? <laughs> and he belched really loudly, and all these people turned out. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was really bad, and he really. It was really loud, and he was laughing. What did laughing. you do after that? I left him in the restaurant. Oh, good for you. <laughs> you understand what I mean about me, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> don't worry, I don't think you've met anyone like that. No, you did the right thing. Did I? And, um, Honestly. Please that you came in and said that. Um, OK, you know. that's fine. I'm not Excellent. asking for my money back or anything. No. Right, OK. Thank you. Thank I will mention it to her. OK? Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm really sorry that you had such an awful time. That's all right, Matthew. <laughs> That's all right. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks for letting us know. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jackie goes, and we send our boss back in to hear what Natalie's been told. OK, then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Jane's gone, has she? She has. She's left you to it. Any messages, Natalie? Uh, Jackie Chatfield has just been in. She's very upset. She's the gentleman that she was with last night was very rude, arrogant, self-centred. He belched very loudly across the table and embarrassed her. I've got a feeling, actually, this is my fault, because... This gentleman has used the agency about, well, probably about three times now. But every time he comes in and sees me, he's so damn nice about it. Yeah. And I go, all right, all right, Dave, you know. Hello, ideal friends. Yes, of course. Can I have your name, please? Sorry, Hello? Let's send in the man in question, Natalie's boyfriend, Richard, who's going to claim that he only dated other girls as a favour for a friend. I know you keep coming in. And you yeah. keep saying to me... <laughs> we just had a complaint this morning to my temp from a lady who's a very nice lady. You've been belching at her. Uh, excuse me. You've been me. constantly irritating her. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Excuse me. No, and this isn't the third time. Can I interrupt you, please? Can I interrupt you, please? Sorry? Just, you know, just when the lads asked me if I'd do it for a favour. Oh, God, I don't believe this. <laughs> I don't believe He's this. He's been in three times. <laughs> this is the gentleman, Natalie. This is the gentleman. You have seen this gentleman three times. I've seen this gentleman three times. Three times I've given him warnings. So tell me again. Read them out Moody, to me. Moody, arrogant, self-centred, pig-headed. Someone who gets stroppy when somebody turns up late. Somebody who constantly looks at their watch and hurries up, is about five minutes in front of the person, walks in front of them, doesn't wait with them. I just... I did it for a friend, I mean, I just... I didn't do anything. Did you see this woman last night? I did, I did it for a friend. Oh. Jackie's back. Hello. Hello. Jackie, come here. I, I, was, I, I just went to the post No, it's office. fine, it's fine. Excellent. Come here. Because we've uh, got a bit Jackie, of a problem. Jackie, we've got a very serious question here to ask you. Is this the gentleman you saw last night? This <gasps> Dave Cooper? What? Yes, that's him. That's the one who did that thing in the restaurant. Oh, did what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do in that restaurant? Jackie? You complete... Did he pay for the meal? <laughs> Yeah. What else did you say? On that pad, you wrote it down. What Don't worry, I know him. I feel sorry for you if you know that man. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 
Is this definitely the person? Oh, yes, Jackie, Beyond... are you absolutely sure? It was last night, Sue. I mean, I know that face. I can't forget it. I'm... I'm sorry, can you answer that for me, Natalie? Enter me as another lonely heart. But <laughs> <laughs> any yes, of us would go to these lengths. OK? Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Right. Did you see her? I did it for a friend, right? One of the boys. How you know, can you do it for a friend if you are seeing the woman? Am I interrupting something? No. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, Margaret, thank you so much for setting her up. I mean, she was absolutely marvellous. Richard, that was a genuine Oscar-winning performance. <laughs> I, I'm so pleased to see you in one piece. But, ladies and gentlemen, was she wonderful? Natalie O'Connell. <laughs> Take a look at this. Please can do that. If you want to know what caused that, we'll show you after the break. She's coming. Golden Grahams. That taste of oven-toasted corn and whole wheat with a touch of honey means you're not just delicious, you're not just good. Your golden, new Golden Graham. Shut up, just go to Golden. If ever you need extra vitamins, here's one name you can always turn to. Boost. It's slightly rippled with a flat underside. The Daily Mail announces the arrival of their great new game, Travel Check, with £1 million of travel to be won. Pick up this card at your newsagent. Every winner will get four free tickets to our British Airways worldwide destination. Plus, every adult can get up to £200 off British Airways flights. Travel Check. Play tomorrow only in the Daily Mail. a Chinese, so I thought I'd treat myself to British lamb stir-fry. Slice some vegetables, cut a lamb steak into strips, slam in a wok, and add lemon juice and soy sauce. British lamb stir-fry. Quick and delicious. Wok could be easier. <laughs> be creative. Slam in the lamb. Oh, electric hogs, oh, yeah. Yes, easy. they are easy to clean. They just, just wipe, wipe over. Wipe over. And it looks That's like right. new. It looks good. And, uh... <coughs> Not like some of these other things, you know, that are just there to, you know, oh, this looks pretty in my kitchen. You know, it's there to do its job, and it's does it does it, does it well. And it does it efficiently, it does it doesn't well. it, Andrew? That's right. Yes, Dad. For all your creature comforts, cook electric. One of these is a Chippendale library chair, circa 1773. It has a lyre pattern backsplat, and the serpentine crest rail is crowned with an oval patera. Lotus socks, reed and tapered legs give the chair its well-balanced design, as does the deeply carved Cuban mahogany. There are deep-seated doubts about the other one. Export from Carlsberg, for those who know the difference. now is Simon B. His boss, Helen Mann, told us what a laugh Simon was to have around the office and could we think of an interesting beetle type of job for him. 
Well, we arranged for Simon to work in our baked bean factory. A factory where things went with a real bang. <laughs> Here's Simon meeting our boss and being shown how to mix up our special baked bean flavourings. Now, this is, the, this is the very highly spiced stuff. One pinch of that, OK? One scoop of that, two scoops of that, and a half a scoop of that. Right. OK. And then two shapes of each of these. Well, that's what I've got to do. Just, just that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. fairly simple. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got to nip round the corner to uh, the chemist. Just uh, get his first pinch of that. Yeah. Pinch of that. Pinch of that. One of them. One of them. One of them. One of them. The manager's off, leaving Simon all alone with our beans. But what Simon doesn't know is that those highly spiced flavourings are going to have quite an explosive effect on our specially rigged baked beans. He's mixing himself up quite a powerful concoction. It's about time we started the beans bubbling. a really big baked bean bang. Oh. the beans again. Yeah, the permanent effects of that, you know, which creates, you know, the fermentation build-up, you know, it's obviously you had, a, you had a blow back there. Look, just use the mop and clear it off into that bucket. Oh, and you've got any insurance or nothing, you know, from, from your agency? Yeah. yeah, national insurance, all right. Oh, no. <laughs> full of beans, does it? No fermentation stuff in oh, number three at all. Yeah. worth of beans here. Now this is a neutralizer. We put some more of this in. Put two. Hey, I shouldn't go again now. If you put that stuff in. Oh, 
Huh? Hey? No, no, more than that. Huh? Hey? Huh? Yeah, a bit more. A bit more. That's it, yeah. In there. I'll explain everything that happened. Yeah. I'll tell you it was my fault. Yeah. And then I'll leave, alright? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Too much of something. I don't know what. I'm never touching beans again, I'll tell you. Well, you must have really put the wind up, you eh? <laughs> Yeah, you can go in there, Dad. Hey? I'm never no, no. Put we'll, okay. Anything. Don't blue 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 blue. Just round here. Just round here. Get all this stuff here. Sorry about this. It's me. Right. And to find the floor a bit slippy. This is Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> Whose idea was this? <laughs> it was Helen. Helen, I'll kill her when I see her. Thanks for, thanks for telling us about him. Uh, it's nice to see you all in one piece. You obviously didn't kill her because you do admire her. And we'd like to thank them both. Ladies and gentlemen, Helen and Simon B. Sadly, that's all we've got time for. But before we go, take a peek at this. Say it. Oh, no, no, you, it's you. You put the thumb in the look. Yeah. <laughs> That belongs to the calf around the corner, doesn't it? It's a me, the calf. It's not you. <laughs> That's still to come on Beatles About. But please, please keep your lovely letters coming in. We really couldn't make the show without you and your friends and family. But don't forget, watch out. Next time, it could be you. Good night. News, Balmy. And on the Isle of Wight, detectives want the public to assist a murder investigation. The wife of a Chinese restaurant owner was stabbed to death at Cowes. Her husband was also injured. A 24-year-old chef faces charges. Police want to trace bus passengers between Ride, Newport and Cowes on October the 4th. 
Thousands of competitors gathered in South Sea for the Great South Fun Run. The 10-mile run is a major coup for the city, which is trying to build up its reputation as a sports venue. Ceremonial cannon marked the start of the event, and sporting personalities Roger Black and Frank Bruno were there to wave encouragement. The run was won by the Russian Olympic 10,000-metre champion Olga Bondarenko. And that's it from the weekend news team. Goodbye. And now the weather. It'll be dry tonight with the possibility of some fog as temperatures fall to 9 Celsius. Tomorrow the fog will clear to leave a bright day with some scattered showers, highs of 16 degrees Celsius. And next on TBS we forecast some stormy reactions as beetles about. When you encounter Raffaello, be careful. Nothing is what it seems. It may look angelic, but every Raffaello is a little white lie. A whole almond in a sensual center and crispy shell dusted with coconut. To satisfy the devil in you, Raffaello, Little White Lies from Ferrero. Wake up in the morning, I want to be breakfast with sunflowers. Where do I lay on my bread? Oh, bright to light. It's high by Wait a minute. Hey, did somebody change the blur? Well, what do you know? Polly unsaturates. Oh. Polly unsaturates? Oh. Where did that come from? Sunflowers. Bright to light. Man was an animal. He killed the old woman. No doubt about it, in my mind. My whole standing in this community is, is shot to pieces because of that damn priest and his son. Torn loyalties. I've fallen in love with you. In a case of passion and professional conflict. You're really enjoying your cat and mouse game with him, aren't you? Oh, that's ridiculous. Is it? A new lease of death, tonight at 7.45 on TBS. And ahead of our Ruth Rendell mystery, Jeremy Beadle's Out and About. Watch out, Beadle's about. Watch out, Beadle's about. You better watch out, cause Beadle's about. Watch out, Beadle's about. Welcome to the show. Take a look at some of the jewels in tonight's treasure chest. We've highly explosive humour as we bombard a car park. We've hairdressing havoc when our perm sets like concrete. <laughs> and Peppy starts steaming when his restaurant develops squatters. <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce Stavros Angelatis and his girlfriend Angela Oletska. They met when Angela was on holiday in Greece. They fell in love and Stavros moved here just to be with her. <laughs> However, next to Angela, the most important thing in Stavros's life is his beloved car. And when Angela wrote to us, we came up with one of our most spectacular stunts ever. Here's Stavros parking his car and heading off with his girlfriend, Angela, for a day out at the Imperial War Museum, Duxford Airfield. Meanwhile, we swap his car for an identical copy and stand by for some fireworks. <laughs> Here comes Stavros to meet our territorial army soldiers on an exercise. Ah, oh, sorry. Yes, could you, would you mind just hanging on for five minutes? We're doing a display tomorrow for a mortar bomb attack. Oh. And so we're sending over some dummy mortar bombs now and we're just going to get the range. So be five minutes, that's all, OK? Yeah. You are free to commence fire now. Over. Repeat, it's going to look like our mortar fires are rather bad shots. <laughs> of course, they're not real bombs, just special effects. 
Yes, you are on time for 43. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that looks all right to me. Tell him it's a live show, quick. <laughs> oh, my God! Stand back. Stand back. <laughs> 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 Live shells over Tell him the cease fire immediately. Fire over. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back. Would you cease fire over? You are firing live rounds. I'm firing live shells. Tell him. I'm telling him, sir. I'm telling him. I think they've stopped firing now, so I think we're all right. fire, but the guy's finished. Probably what? <laughs> Live rounds over. Which is your car? I'm going to the That car is. Well, the one. Well, that one hasn't been hit, so I think you're all right. Sergeant, can you tr still keep trying to get through? Here's our museum official, who's rather impressed by all the explosions. That's not bad, was yes, it? But I've been watching it all. Terrific. Is it going to be like that on Saturday? Well, it's going to be similar. It's wonderful. It's yes, outstanding. Did you see that? That was marvellous, wasn't it? I've had a problem with my car. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, then why do you call the RAC? These chaps are, are, are bomb people, the mortar people. Yeah, but. He's put it down in Who's that car? Which 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 you're responsible for this. Why is it possible? Because this is this is this is doxy. Now is that affirmative? Probably one. There we are. Come underneath there. That's it. Yeah. Hang on. Is it safe? Yes. Yeah, perfectly safe. Those boys know what they're doing. They're terrific. <laughs> Beetle to meet the troops. I think you're just about danced it down. You're great. What can I say? <laughs> Angela said that she was sure that such a sketch would be priceless, and it certainly was. Angela, thanks for the letter. But what do you say about Stavros? Mr. Cool, ladies and gentlemen, Stavros Angelatos. <laughs> Remember a few weeks back, we showed you our collapsing wall of ping-pong balls? He did it twice that day. Meet Jeff Ruby and his boss Jane Garfield. Jane contacted us to tell us what a great fella Jeff was, but could we find a beetle sort of job for him? It seemed the perfect combination. Jeff and half a million ping pong balls. <laughs> Here's Jeff meeting our boss and being told how to load our boxes of ping pong balls. It's fairly simple. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Well, I mean, you know, two, one across that way, okay. Um, I've got to nip out for about a couple of minutes. I've got to go around the chemist, pick up a prescription, OK? But I'll be back, uh, be back in a couple of minutes and I'll shift them over with the old forklift, OK? Right, then. Great. See you in a bit. So Jeff is left alone with our wobbly wall of ping pong balls, which is in danger of total collapse.
boss's back. Yeah. Yeah, yellow ones and green ones. Yeah. I was taking them down. Yeah. Because they're all stacked up like that. They just sort of, the top one just began to sway. I tried to pick them up, but it, it just wouldn't stay, and they all went. I'm going to come and pick all this lot up in 20 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, shove them back in. Uh, now I want. Um, I need five boxes of, of sorted, but I want two boxes of. Can you get me two boxes of the yellow ones, first of all? <laughs> Two boxes of the green ones. <coughs> this is unbelievable. I mean, you must have done something. You must have knocked it or something. No, I swear on my life, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a stick on the yellow, on hey, the yellow one? No, just get those in there. Oh, look at this. My balls all over the floor. Oh, <laughs> Enter me. I said, I said, didn't I? I said, this is like Jimmy B. I don't want to say. Well, would you like to tell us what you think of Jane? Oh, he's He obviously loves you, you know, the way he thinks about you, Jane. But thank you for setting up. He really was terrific. What a good sport. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Ruby. <laughs> Please allow me to introduce Robert Vasquez, a top hairstylist. His dear friend, Anna Christow, who unfortunately can't be with us, asked us to set him up. So we arranged for Robert to demonstrate our new range of hair care products. A range we specially rigged. <laughs> Here we are at a top London hotel. Thank you. I'll leave you in the very capable hands of Robert. Thank you. So, Robert starts work on our model, Janie. Take a good look at Janie, because I don't think Robert has. Sticky. This is the advantage of this product. When Robert finishes, our PR girl takes him downstairs for a publicity photo session. We're having for the in house magazine, Robert's doing. Meanwhile, our model Janie is changing places with her identical twin, Michelle, whose hair has been super glued to the rollers. Will he put him the switch? And how will he cope with the concrete hair? Right. Oh, my goodness. 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 Oh, my
to her hair. It's coming off. I can't believe, it's I can't believe this. It's falling out. Robert, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, we do, Robert. This is an emergency. I've never seen I such a thing. I never make this. <laughs> I don't make this. I put the, the mousse and that's all. <laughs> going on I don't know I mean, I have to be phoning the, the hair federation there's well you can I, can I could do. I could ask uh, I could tell them what I did but there's nothing I could do well what about me what am I, I supposed don't know. to don't do ask me dear don't ask me because it's them it's their product I'm just you're only blaming applying. us you're blaming we well, are beating your product. but if then, it's been on, all right on other people this is the first time it's happened to them I don't know probably your your body react with something else oh it's my fault there's nothing I could do anymore there's nothing... So you're giving up. That's great, you're that's great. Up. There's nothing you can There's do. There's nothing I can do. Thanks very much. Why is it like that? <laughs> you're the professional. You're the professional, but that's not mine. Robert, we, we have... This is a kind product. I know, so I heard, so it's I read. It's in it. Well, so I read, so I... But I don't know what happened. There's nothing I could do. Enter me as John Tishas, <laughs> Reading the creator of the hair care range. Is that the hairdressing job? So, you see what you've done here? Could you do anything with mine? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Princess, if I was to go like this and take this off and then take this out. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You were brilliant. We don't normally do this, but as a special memento, there's some Rio Vitae for you to take back to Ealing Broadway to your salon. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, what a star, Robert Vasquez. <laughs> take a look at this. I don't think you should start turning people around. Watch out, the Beatles are bound. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the show. Have a quick flick through tonight's Slick Tricks. We've a wet and wild time in our crazy car wash, create chaos with our inconvenient cabling, and it's high intrigue with our cheating lady boss. You know those high-pressure hoses that they use in car washes? Well, have you ever wondered what would happen if one of them went totally bananas? Meet Leroy James who was set up by his boss, Trudy Hicks. Trudy reckoned that Leroy was ready for a Beatle type of job, so we got him along to work in our very own crazy car wash. <laughs> Here's Leroy starting work in our garage and programming our computerized car wash. What he doesn't know is that we control the machine and the car he's about to wash is covered with special paint that dissolves in water. Let's see how he gets on. The paint's coming off, and Leroy can't stop the machine. more water sprays.
Now we'll turn the water off and let Leroy inspect the damage. <laughs> More water, I think. <laughs> Here comes our snooty lady car owner, who's not too pleased with Leroy's work. Is that my car? Is that my car? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> I don't believe it. That's my car. What have you done? I want that car cleaned. I don't want the paint taken off it. What did you do? Well, he just after just started today. And he's just said, Clean the paint off. I don't know. He just said, Put it on the that should be enough. Enter our garage boss to cause more havoc with the high pressure hose. Have you seen the state of my car? What have you done? I've done what you saw on my leg. The boy must be completely jinxed. He has taken all the paint off my car. Show me. Show me what he did. I'm not you didn't mess about with this, did you? No. Because this is very important. Just, I just don't understand where you... <laughs> Just a little accident, love. I'm sorry. No, no, what did you do? Just show me what you did. That's what I've done. Show, show, yeah, but show me press physically B. what you did. Press B in. Press B. Well, right. press the B in. Like that. Yeah. 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 Then one. <laughs> Enter chauffeur beetle to get wet. Oh, what? Yeah, I'm doing amazing stuff. It's amazing stuff. I told you it'll take off anything. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Trudy, thank you very much. You said he was a great guy, and he really was. I mean, probably one of our cleanest stunts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the sensational Leroy James. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Before we move on, Leroy, I'm going to show you something. You know, people always ask if I get tricks played on me. Well, I think you're going to enjoy this, Leroy. Take a look at what the team did to me. This delightful lady next to me is Kerry Collins. And this is her sister, Suzanne, who wrote to tell us all about Kerry's pet hate. She can't stand it if people park across her driveway. <laughs> and I know the feeling, believe you me. So Suzanne asked if we could arrange for something, some sort of permanent obstruction across Kerry's driveway. Mm -hmm. Well, with the help of Kerry's boyfriend, Alan Scotting, that's what we did. Here's our workman waiting for his boss. And here's Kerry, who's not happy about a cable junction box being installed across her driveway. How are you doing, Ray? Because, I'm glad uh, I'm glad to put that over my drive in front of the garage. So, what do you mean? What's it got to do with you? What, I live there and you put that over my drive. Oh, well, you're, you're one of the lucky ones, then you'll soon be able to tune into cable television. Yeah, that's <laughs> Can well. I see the plans that you're allowed to do that? 
We well, see the plans. I mean, it's just uh, we just put in the junction. What's the problem? Well, you're over my garage and you're over the drive. She said she can't get her car in and out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see what your problem is. No, you will do. As I say, we, we applied for a tender for cable television in this area. We're supplying the whole area. And uh, we were told by the council... Uh, excuse me, can I have my plans, please? Can I have my plans, please? Kerry's decided to discuss plans, the plans with a neighbour. What do you mean, what, when you finish with them? Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm sorry, you have no, no. right to show... Yeah, and you've got no f***ing right putting it... I'm going to send you one that have to put that junction box there. But you have no right, you have just stolen my plans. Oh, I've stolen it? Yeah. Oh, well, go and get in it then. Could, could I have them back? Can I just have a look? Is there any problem with me looking? Yes, I'd like my plans back, please. So I can't look? What's your, what's your problem? I don't see what your problem is. Sorry, I must take these. Uh, what's, what's your problem? I'll tell you what you can do. Oh, I don't know why you don't like the fox. <laughs> now, the, the problem seems to be the box, yeah? We could maybe paint it a more subdued colour, if that's a problem. Yeah, why not? Pink and green spots. Like a pink and green spot? We could do that, could well, we? I think that's a bit this is unofficial, so. Bang him. You want me to bang him? I'll show that on tape. Here comes Kerry's boyfriend, Alan, who's going to agree that bribing a workman's a good idea. It's cable, it's a cable television junction box. Then maybe if I bang him over 50 quid. How much? How much? What was that? Well, I know. Do that. I know, it's unofficial. Yeah, but, no, but if it's on a... Well, it gets it out of the way then, doesn't it? Kerry's about to meet our electricity man who's locked inside her house. We haven't got a key. Key, you might be using the wrong one. Is it the right way up the key? Don't ask any questions. I'm only walking in and out of here all day long and all night. Anybody fancy a cup of tea? He's out there, look. I just jiggled it and it came it's out. It's open. So where's these keys, then? They're inside on my toolbox. Can I have a cup of tea when you go in there? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> One man's out. Here comes a second. It's me as another dodgy workman. I don't want to read it. What else you got? What? What else you walked out there with? I was only having a look at this. Well, can you enter out all your pockets? Where are you being? Well, there's a man again. Can you enter out all your pockets? Throw me around in my house without permission. What are you doing to your pockets? What are you
<laughs> Unfortunately, Alan can't be with us tonight. He's actually a professional footballer and he's got an away match. But first of all, Suzanne, thank you for that letter. I mean, she really was an absolute diamond. She was perfect, I tell you. Absolute. Was she a star, ladies and gentlemen? Give her a round of applause, please. <laughs> Take a look at this. Oh, I can't believe it. So you and you. Who, so who's married to who? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to know what that was all about, we'll show you after the break. <laughs> Brought to our notice by a colleague who thought she was perfect for Beatles About, and indeed, as you'll see, she was. We arranged for Stephanie to work in our set-up office. Our lady boss turned out to have a rather tangled love life in which Stephanie got caught up. Here's Stephanie starting work in our office and meeting our boss, Sue. But what's happening is, you see, my fella, who I meet him for lunch, he may ring, he may even come oh, and pop in. Oh, um, basically, this like, is... Um, Jane knows all about it. Tickets to Venice Friday. Oh! The weekend. Oh, how hurtful. Do you think you'll like it? For you, and it's Oh, him. he's sweetie. Oh, it's so <laughs> 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 like a bit. Smell like it. Oh, smell like it. Is he in the abbot? Yes, I'll only be ten minutes. Don't worry, it's you who's to. So, Stephanie okay. gets on with the job, and we send in Sue's boyfriend, Steve. We can ring you on that. And um, will you be um, in there all day with Malcolm? Lovely. Okay, thanks very much then. Bye. Hi there. I'm Steve, yeah. Hi, happy to meet you. I'm Steph. Hi, Steph. I'm just camping for... Nice um, to meet you. Sue said to me, Steve might come in. Get booking. Oh, she didn't say that. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Oh, right, she said okay. if he comes in, let's have him sit down. Wait, wait, oh, that's a secret. That's a surprise. What secret? Oh, 